Hey, what's up guys? I'm back with another ham radio crash course video and today I want to talk about a very important topic. I want to talk about propagation. What the heck? After an emergency, if you want me to find you, turn on the radio and tune to channel number one. Okay, tune to channel one. Once every two minutes, for 30 minutes, hold down the PTT button and announce your first name and speak for 30 seconds. This is Leia, I'm looking for Josh. 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 Yeah, yeah, I'm here. What, where are you? What happened? Are you okay? I'm okay. I'm all right, listen, get to the rendezvous spot. Get to our rendezvous spot and meet up. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to part one of three parts. Yeah, the longer I thought about emergency comms, the more I realized that it really needs to be a multi-part video because there's really, three philosophical areas for me when it comes to emergency comms. There's the immediacy right after an emergency, a disaster or whatever. What do you do then, part one? Part two is information receiving. Just receiving as much information you can and, and what's the best ways to do it and how do you continually stay active and, and capture all the information you need and use that almost like a second set of eyes to just gather the world around you. We're gonna talk a lot about that. And part three, the last part, that's gonna be where we discuss how you can get engaged in bringing back um, either functional um, abilities to get back to society as we knew it, or where you kind of have to take over a role where you're brokering communication back and forth and, and running as kind of like a relay system. Lots to talk about there, lots of really cool technology they're gonna walk through, like digital modes that we've talked about in other videos, but it's gonna be solely focused on MCOMs, emergency comms. So let's get started with part one. chaos after an emergency happens. Couple that with the fact that people might be injured, there might be a violent altercation, you'll lose services like standard cell phone communication. Really things just break down and you're not really capable of dealing with it. And and if you, the the, the experienced comms guy, are not ready and, and kind of are, are in a, a period of chaos where you yourself can't figure out what you do, then the best thing you can do is is kind of prepare and just make a kit. Make a kit for you, make a kit for your family, and duplicate this uh, for as many as you need to, and make it as easy to use as possible so that even yourself will be able to use it in a trying situation where you could be injured, you could have an arm you know, that's damaged that you can't use, you could be rendered immobile, you could be any number of things. Having a kit, having something simple that you've replicated and, and produced in mass will make it much easier for you to Find your, your people, find your family, and then come to one location. Or summon them to you if you're hurt, or go to them if they're hurt, and vice versa. So that's where this kit comes in. It's very simple. I use glass in this case. Um, I wouldn't recommend glass, but I wanted something that was nice and see-through that everybody could get an idea of what's in it. In this, in this glass case are one Baofeng UV3R radio. I know I mentioned that in the past. Um, it is an older radio. They have a newer model, a couple of newer models, I believe, actually. But I went th with the UV3R because the UV3R can be charged via USB cable. That's very important because you can put a battery bank, which I have in here, and this will keep a charge for a very long time. So what will happen is you'll run out of batteries on your radio. It'll just die from being turned off and sitting. But this little battery backup will keep a charge for a very long time. So really, and, and your kit's gonna be different than mine, appreciate that. But you get this kit going, and you get your cables for your charger, and you get your, your, your battery charged up, and you lock it all down, and then what do you do? Well, there's two things you need to do. 
One, you need to program the radio. And you program the radio all the same as all the other radios. And then you have a card, part two of the, of the system, this card on top tells the people that have this kit what they need to do and how they establish communications. What this kit does is it tells you two very specific things. One, I want to be found by you and relatively only you or the group of people that have these kits. Or two, I want to be found by anybody and I can use the help. Well, how do you do that? Well, there's two channels, among many other channels, but two specific channels that these radios have programmed. One is a fairly unknown, it's in the open, but not many people are receiving on it. And then two is the universal call for help in North America. So if you lived in Europe or Asia or Australia, you may have your own either two meter or 70 centimeter frequency that you'd use as your call frequency. And what you do, there's lots of different rules for this, everybody has their own system, but this one purely calls out that once every two minutes for 30 minutes, hold down the PTT and talk for 30 seconds. Well, what does that do? Well, over the course of 30 minutes, if anyone tunes in and listens for more than a minute, or uh, up to a minute, they will hear you if they're in the vicinity of your broadcast. That will allow you to establish communications with one or more of the groups that have these kits, either you, your spouse, or your friends, or, or whoever are part of the prepper group. If you have a prepper group, or just a, it could be your neighborhood watch group. Why not? Why not? This is, you know, this is under $100. This is under $50 to get this little kit going. Why would you not do that? And hand these out to your neighbors and, and say, here you go, guys. It couldn't be simpler. Let's, uh, let's plan for a, a mock emergency on the first of next month and around uh, 8 p.m., and we'll try them out. Couldn't be easier, right? And I've always mentioned, right, you need to practice. You need to practice, you need to practice, you need to practice. So if you're gonna hand these out to someone, it's a good idea to set up a mock disaster scenario. Kind of like what you saw in the beginning of the video. We did a mock uh, disaster scenario here with Leia. I actually let her go in blind with the unit and then I walked her through kind of how to use it. She was up and running in less than 20 minutes. Couldn't be easier, very, very easy. Now, this is fairly no frills right now. You can go so far as to number what to do your steps, which I did here, but you could color coordinate those to the buttons on the radio if you really wanted to make it easy. And the sky's the limit. You can do whatever you'd like there. So now what? Now you've established communications with your, with your group. What you do at that point is you need to have a plan. And that plan is gonna be either a written plan or something on the internet or whatever, but it documents exactly what's gonna happen in the event of an emergency. And what the plan usually states is, once you've established communications, pick a rendezvous spot and then go to that rendezvous spot. The rendezvous spot is gonna be something that is referred to in code or in name, that someone that had a card like this on the backside of this, for example, um, would have the details of where that place is, either an address or a, a geographic location a lot long, and then everybody would try to get to that location. With the radio, if anybody enumerated that they were hurt or couldn't get to that area, then you can plan to pick that person up. What you're ideally trying to avoid here, and it's really only a matter of importance when you're dealing with something of like a violent altercation, like if the country's attacked or if there's a bomb that went off, kind of like the simulated disaster that we did in the beginning of this video then you may not want to transmit your location in the clear because you don't know whomever blew up that bomb or whomever may come looking for survivors, particularly organized survivors, that wanted to co-locate and, and tend for themselves and be self-reliant. That's again why this is broken up into two different segments. The first segment is for just your small group. And the larger segment is if for anybody listening to the call frequency. If there's a disaster like an earthquake in California, then it might be a good idea to be using the call frequency. Or if there's a, a major sustained loss of power or something like that that's not, um, not a, a violent altercation like another nation uh, forcing their will upon the United States or whatever state you belong to, whatever country you're in, then, then you may want to go in the clear. You want to maybe be in the open because you may be able to find somebody to help you in any particular situation. Now let's say you were just lost. Let's say you, you, you were gonna go out for a camping trip, you got lost, you got separated from your vehicle, you were in a hike, you were whatever. Could this be used to extricate your safety? Absolutely, because the plan is the same. Once at the beginning of the hour, start every 30 minutes, transmitting for 30 seconds, or every two minutes for 30 second, 30 minute period, 
for, two, uh, for 30 seconds. That will allow people to find your location. Once you have a similar keyed radio, you can hand this to the search party or multiples of the search party to go find the person that you're looking for. Now this is very low, low frills. From here, the sky's the, the sky's the limit. You can move into things like APRS, the automated packet radio, um, automated positioning radio service. I think so. <laughs> uh, you can use something like APRS to transmit your location, exactly pinpoint elevation, heading, speed, all that. But that's more of an advanced thing. Part one, really, of this video is just to discuss what to do when you have something like this kit. So hopefully. This covers the base part one, you have a disaster, now what? There are plenty of other things and I may produce appendices to this part one for more details based off of the questions that you guys have, but I wanna hear your questions. Is something like this viable to you? Is something like this useful? I will post the link to the card in uh, the Google Docs, I'll post it wherever I can. I'll try to also post my flash, my uh, my memory flash of my Baofeng radio um, to something like a Dropbox or whatever so you guys can get it. Of course, this is only gonna be useful to people that live in Southern California like me, um, except for the one and two frequencies, your your primary frequency for um, your private group, and then your your alternating frequency in the, in the clear and the open. That's only gonna be good for people in North America. But you get the idea. Guys, I would love it if you gave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. If you have not already, please subscribe. We're gonna do another one of these probably in a couple weeks to a month to cover um, the receiving of information. What do you do now that everybody's co-located? Now what? What do you do with your time? How do you capture all the information you can with just, you know, you can't put your eyeballs on everything. How do you use radio to help you in an emergency situation? So please come back for that. Please subscribe. Set that little button, that little button next to subscribe to notify you when I post videos. I post videos every day. It's kind of hard to get out of the way of them, but I know that you want to see the next episode, and so I would love it if you did that. Guys, again, thank you so much. Appreciate all the support, and I'll talk to you later.